Okay, so having three kind of construction people up here, our main topic today is actually going to be talking about budgeting and planning your renovation, which is really appropriate. It's something that pops up a lot on Facebook, a lot in conversations, a lot and a lot of stuff. And speaking for myself or some of the professionals up here, it's kind of an interesting topic because we hear a lot about, you know, so-and-so investor kind of getting screwed on a job or screwed in a project. And for the most part, if you plan your process and if you plan your job right, that doesn't happen a whole lot. So you can really mitigate about that, and this is what the conversation is going to be. So segment one is our pro tip. We love pro tips. And uh, let's see, pro tip here is controlling your business means really taking ownership of not just the progress, but also the setbacks. So what does that mean for you? I mean, the conversation I was having today with an investor who ran into some GC issues. Um, they had a GC who started the work, um, took a large just deposit up front, didn't finish the work. The work off obviously wasn't up to par either. Now he's MIA, the GC, and they are, they've had to bring in another group. And just asking general questions about, you know, how's cash, do you think you can help it? They lost focus of the work product every day. Or, you know, I feel like some of it could have been managed if they were like right on top of it that day, but then yeah. also on top of the costs as well. Yeah, exactly. How did you pay too much up front for the work that you expected to be done in whatever amount of time? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really common, I think, in real estate to want to, when you screw up, no one likes taking responsibility, <laughs> like honestly. Yeah. Uh, it's not fun to kind of put the, put the you know, picture on yourself. And we don't want to victim blame because bad stuff happens, especially on the construction side. But at the same time, if you are really on top of your game, on top of your costs, on top of knowing what your costs should be, on top of your management aspect of the subcontractors or the general contractors, I think you can mitigate a lot of that really on the front end. I and mean, that's, for investors, a critical piece of your team is the, the budget, the GC. Mm -hmm. I mean, and everyone seems to think that, well, I can only buy at this price. I only have this much room. My budget just needs to work at that number. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of variables in the budget that you can't control. Cost mm -hmm. of labor, cost of materials, cost of wood is increasing, things like that, lumber. I mean, um, so, you know, that needs to be a critical piece with investors as I would think they're touring properties what's their budget going to be, unless you're savvy enough to be your own GC and mm -hmm. do your own deals. Mm -hmm. But for the bulk of people that I work with, I would say they're outsourcing that, at least to subs, yeah. if it's yeah, not sure. a De GC. Definitely outsourcing this. Yeah, the average first investor is not going to come in with a bunch of labor and just start knocking out stuff and not know how to pay labor, not know what ought to get done. So you're, you're either using a GC or using a subcontractor for a, mm -hmm. you know, for a sub trade along the way. And if you're going to do that, you need to be in communication. You know, you need to have your proper expectations up front so that you avoid the pitfalls that you can bump into on the side. Because like you said, it's a huge part of the renovation process is the renovation. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, and speaking right. from the lender side, if you have a great lender who actually has experience as mm -hmm. investors, they're going to give you feedback, like building for $40 a square foot, a brand new house for $300,000 ARV, highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not going to say impossible, highly unlikely. Um, but if your GC saying that, are they undercutting the bid to get the work? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have change orders or a higher bid at the end. And then what happens to your deal then? Um, By the way, so not, a good not, person would look at Not to say that change orders are bad because stuff comes up on the job site as you're going. You change mm -hmm. the product selection, you change the scope of the work, something like that, that materially changes what's going on on the job, then that's a legitimate change order. But like you're saying, a lot of folks will come in, underbid, not, have some kind of generic, oh, it's $15,000 to do a bunch of random stuff, and then say, oh, that wasn't included. So, so I mean, I, I mean, not to like kind of circumvent it all, but I always tell everyone get three bids oh, yeah. for everything. I personally, with my stuff, get five. I don't know why. Oh Maybe it's neurotic. Wow. Maybe I just like suffering. <laughs> through all of those we're gonna, visits. We're not going to bid her stuff. Just, yeah. We're staying away from that. Well, I always recommend one bid just <laughs> yeah, for yours. Yeah. Just for yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we were doing stuff, that was what we did. But that, for me, I feel like I always, because what <laughs> happens is the last few large ticket items that I've had done, like the HVAC, I had to okay. have completely replaced in, in, a, in a, my Cedar Park rental. Um, the first guy wanted to replace everything, ducks, everything. I didn't really see a need for that. It's a 2010 build house. Mm -hmm. So really I should have just needed components or at least part of the system. Um, another guy came in, gave me the cheapest bid possible. and was like, okay, something's weird. So for yeah. me, by the time I got the third bid, I'm like, where's the normal? I don't sure. know. So when I get five, I'm all, I feel like I have a better idea of the normal, you know? Man, but you like, maybe I'm- You like taking a lot of time. 
But you also don't. I think do, we've conversated yeah. a lot that I am risk adverse. I'm also, pretty but, conservative. Yeah, but you also don't do 30, 40 houses a year personally, so you don't necessarily no. know what the costs are on stuff. So that's kind of why we're having this conversation. I think is to discuss kind of what not not necessarily cost exactly, but more strategy to have that under control and have an expectation of what the cost. Find success be. from people in yeah, the market exactly. and in the dark. You guys are in the dark.